Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's so nice that you are here with us, and we're so glad to be here. I'm yeah. Patty. I'm Carrie. And we are Studio R12, and we stencil DIY and do all kinds of creative things. We are so happy to share with you. Yes, and you are probably seeing us on our YouTube channel. We would love, love if you would subscribe. As of September of 2024, when we are recording this, we are coming up on a big goal of ours with 19,000 subscribers. 19,000! And we want to thank each and every one of you for um, tuning in and yeah. learning from us and letting us do this. Well, and sharing with um, the world. Mm -hmm. So when you like, subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up, all of that says to the creative world that you think that we have valid things that we're saying sure and, and so, so that's on important tuesdays we release new videos at 5 p.m eastern with patty and myself answering some of our stencil fan questions and showing some fun tips and tricks and techniques and then on saturday mornings bright and early at 6 a.m eastern we release videos that are one of us or one of our other artists painting a project or showing how to do a technique we do backgrounds we do full projects we do a lot of really we fun do a stuff. lot of really fun things like really really yeah. really fun things painting on pots painting on fabric painting on mm -hmm. um all the surfaces we want to try to always make this as informative as possible so that you if you have any questions um remember not to think about projects as projects unless you just love the project mm -hmm. look at it as how do the techniques impact what i get to know about stenciling painting that kind of thing. So we talk about your colors, your contrast, how to choose colors, how to choose a stencil, how to like all all kinds of things. So you're going to get a really de in depth, um, detailed um, instruction. Yeah. So if if you see a video and the design itself might not be your cup of tea, you still will very likely learn a lot of techniques yeah. that you can apply with your colors that you like or the designs that you like to do. Yeah, absolutely. And then we show you how to reuse your stencils, um, take care of your brushes, how to wash your stencils, all of that kind yeah. of stuff. So we, we go from the very ground floor to the very top and everywhere in between, and we just try to keep it interesting. Yep, and you can also find us on studior12.com. We have more than 7,000 titles on our website. We That's have stencils of several different sizes from very small to very large. We have tools, we have project mm -hmm. sets, we have all kinds of really great things. You can subscribe to our newsletter on our website and then you will be notified of the latest video releases, sales, new products, a bunch of fun stuff. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitch and Instagram <laughs> and um um, TikTok. So we're on all of those places and we have a lot of stuff that we release on there. And um, we have a new background today. So we, it is fall. It is, it's been 40 it's degrees. September. I mean, it's not technically fall. It's technically summer, but we've been waking up to 40 degrees. So it is, we're feeling like fall and we know that you guys are painted for fall. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, when I go back through, because we manufacture right here in Southeast Ohio, um, which is a really big deal. We are um, American owned, American made. We ship from here. We construct from here. We do all the things veteran owned, woman owned, like all, all of the little check boxes. But when I walk back through our manufacturing section, um, right now the tables for packaging it are littered mm -hmm. with all things fall. So it is definitely Christmas is also being ordered like yes, it's crazy. True. Yeah. It's yeah. that time of the year. And so one of the staples for fall is painting a leaf. And we have had several questions from our stencil fans about things that they would like to learn about painting leaves. So we wanted to make sure that you had everything that yes. you needed to know from basic to very mm -hmm. detailed so that you can paint leaves this fall and confidently and and leaves are so pretty mm -hmm. I just really that's um, I was looking back through some of my leaf projects and um, I have done some very very beautiful leaves I'm not bragging on myself I just like I love the subject mm -hmm. and it they are fun to do so today I'm going to show you some techniques to make really pretty leaves you can make a simple leaf and you can make a really visually stimulating leaf either is fine mm -hmm. um, it, you don't have to do one or the other but um, I, I just really love the subject, so I'm happy to share with you guys yeah. today. 
All right, ready to go? We're ready. Okay. All right, so um, we have so many versions of leaves. We have so many leaf stencils. Um, we've got things from individual leaves. So you can take your leaf. Um, when you are playing with your leaves, you can flip them and change their kind of their angle because they tend to have that just that little bit of an angle going on. Um, so, and then you can also mix and match. So you could have one of those, one of those, go that kind of way. So you can do whatever version of leaves you want to do. Big, little, little tiny baby guys. Um, you know, so you could make, you could do a border, you could go along there and you could just do like just different leaves doing um, a pattern. You could make it a pattern. Then we have big versions of leaf stencils. So that's the neat thing about Studio R12. Um, so make sure, go to studior12.com. And um, the neat thing about our company is that we offer leaves in all the, all the sizes. So or not just leaves, everything in all the sizes. Um, this one is 18 by 18 and it is 730. And it's, this is the underscore five. So this is probably the biggest size that we have. And is one of these, um, so the one An in overlay? No. Okay. No, the, but the one that you just grabbed mm -hmm. is one of our newest designs and it starts at 11 inches mm -hmm. and then gets bigger. Some of our leaf, leaf stencils go smaller than 11 inches. This one does not because of all of the details. Detail. Yeah, all of but this little But for tracery. this specific video, I chose the bigger ones because we are able to show more mm -hmm. with the bigger designs, but they come in all different shapes, all different sizes. Yeah, and one thing I want to point out, number one, this is gorgeous as a background. Um, it is absolutely glorious. This was, I think, first included think in our... This, in all things, Give Thanks has that yeah. on the background oh, of it. It has it using a texture paste. So, and you can see that video on, um, it's in all things, Give Thanks, and you can see that on YouTube. Um, I think that's released now, right? I will have to check. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was project of the month. Um, but what I want to show about this stencil is this stencil is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could keep going. Um, probably about 15 to 20 stencils in one stencil. So instead of getting these individually like this, unless you need it that way, um, getting one by ones, when you get a stencil like this or this, you're getting all of these leaves all on one stencil. So it's a really economical way to shop. Um, and I think that is a really great thing. Um, you can also choose to do, this is a multi-layered, it has it out of there. This is your background for your leaves. And then it has all the detail on the leaves. And that is the, and we do have a video for that one that I will link. Yeah, and this one is um, one of our videos, but how pretty is that for your front porch? Um, we do so many cool techniques on this one. Um, we show you how to do this detail on here. We show you how to spatter within the stencil, which is a really cool lesson um, within the stencil spattering here, ombre lettering. Like, so these are the kind of lessons that you get on the Saturday um, releases. Just so much fun. Okay, so, and then let's talk about what you would paint leaves on. Um, I have painted leaves on Lazy Susans, Table Runners. Um, I have painted them on totes, so this kind of thing right here. So um, you make yourself a nice centerpiece. You could paint leaves and make festive um, towel wear. This is a towel with tea towel stripes. Interesting enough, we've been talking about tea towel stripes for about two years they have not slowed down. They are still everywhere. Um, but you could put some nice leaves on here. Give it as a nice little hostess gift or something like that. And just like how easy would that be? Like it's just so cool. This was $2.49 from Hobby Lobby. So um, that is an amazing, like a great price. Make great gifts. Always talking about gifts. Okay, let's paint some leaves. Okay, so one thing, don't be afraid if you get a big thing like this and you're not thinking that you're going to use it as a background um, so that it has to all stay connected. You could take your scissors and you can go ahead and you could cut your leaf out and have just a single leaf, cut the ones you want. 
make them all into individual stencils. There's no problem with that. So if you feel like you need to do that, then go ahead. All right, and so let's make a basic leaf and then we'll make a complicated leaf. And palette, I'll be right back. We have a pile of these. Um, we don't reuse these here, but they are reusable. Um, this is a palette paper sheet that you can get. It also makes a great straight edge because it's laser cut, which means it's always going to be really straight. You can cut it and make three pieces of palette. Um, it's available on the website, and um, but it is it is reusable, so you can wash this off and reuse it over and over again. So we don't do it here because we don't have um, cleaning facilities. We have literally just got the bathroom sink. Um, when we did our renovation, we didn't think all the way through that. Um, so it'd be nice to have a little bit more, but there we go. And when you do clean those, you will clean them the same way that you clean your stencils. And so we have video a video on that mm -hmm. that we'll share because there are some things that you'll want to know when you're cleaning your stencils to help protect them so mm -hmm. you can use them over and over and over and over and over. Yes. And then I like to um, just put a piece of tape at the top. Um, the palettes that I used to use, this actually came, um, a lot of things that I do come from necessity. Um, so the manufacturer of the palette paper that I used to use um, discontinued the product. And it had the glued top like a, a pad of paper. And so it would be secured and it wouldn't slide around. And so I really do like to add a piece of tape at the top. And then when I'm stenciling, I'm always going to use two pieces of tape. Not always, but mainly. Um, and I'm going to, in this case, I don't have an edge showing on my board. Um, and so, oh, and I have something I have to share with you. So I'm going to take this off in a second. So I'm going to tape in two places, trying to make them opposite of each other. So, but what I want to talk about that I forgot to tell you is I did one coat of fairly heavy black paint. And if you hear... You can tell that it's pretty rough. So what I want to do is take my 220 grit sandpaper on the sanding block. And then just knock that down because what I'm going to do for the more complex is I'm going to do some rubbing with my stencil brushes and I don't want to have a bunch of bumps and grumps and things like that. So um, if you have something that is not smooth, um, you want to make it a little bit smoother. Excuse me. And then um, if you are worried that you just got scratches all over, when you um, put your varnish on or you finish your wax or whatever, it's going to make all those scrapes and scratches go away, just like that little <coughs> bit of water did. So don't worry about that. Now let's go back to our stencil. Make sure you guys are popping any comments that you have in the comment box below because we want to hear what you say and we want to answer your questions. That is why we do what we do. So um, that's, I think that's important. I'm going to grab one other color. So these are not that different, but I feel like this is a, just a little bit bright and I want to go ahead and knock back just a teeny bit. So this is number 25. And so when you have a big hole, to stencil through. Okay, so this is what my definition of a big hole is something that's um, probably bigger than, say, this kind of thing. Um, it's just a big open area. What happens when you have a giant place to paint in, and say you're using one of these sizes of brushes, you're going to be tapping, 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 and then you're going to be able to tell like a little bit of a pattern. Um, it's just not going to be evenly prepped. And especially the smaller you get, if you start doing that, it's not, not going to work out. Um, if you are a um, traditional painter where you are not afraid of base coating, um, honestly, leaves would be one of the, I, I almost feel like, you know, in food, you have the, like the dirty dozen, the foods that are sprayed with stuff. There are a dirty dozen list of things I would prefer never to base coat with a regular brush like this. Again, in my life, leaves are on that list because... Leaves have all these really sharp edges, and it is really difficult to have the precision to get a really sharp edge on your leaf. So that is why I really love, I, I went to stencils out of like almost, I almost was forced into it. We had a problem at our house. We had a flood. 
um, and it took a long time to get everything redone. So I ended up just focusing on the stencil part of my business. And then from there started using them in everything and I love them. So, but you could, if you wanted to, um, if you're traditional and you don't mind taking time, you could actually use your stencil to trace using like um, one of these um, ceramic leads and you could trace the pattern, take that off and then base coat it if you wanted to. So that's a couple ways that you can take care of that. We are gonna go with the jumbo dauber. So I'm gonna use the number 25 and I'm going to daub off below my pile of paint I could also daub off on my paper towel, but I always start with the dauber on the palette. Okay, and then we are going to just hold this down because that sometimes this can like suck the um, stencil up. So, and then I move in a methodical way. So I move from left to right, right to left, up to down, whatever I'm doing, I move and I'm always tapping slightly on where I've been. And that way I'm mixing wet into wet paint. I will move my fingers over to here. And obviously, yellow over black is going to take more than one coat. <clears throat> and then you'll note that I'm using yellow, but maybe my leaf is going to end up being orange. Um, how does that happen? So what I'm doing is I'm starting with my base, my highlight color. And so that way I establish the highlight and then I can use the harder, darker colors to um, just tint this base color. And then it just kind of all works out. So it's something that I learned over time. Okay, and don't be afraid of peaking. <clears throat> so when you're peaking, you are lifting up an edge of your stencil to make sure that you haven't mess made a mess, you're not bleeding under. Like control of your paint is the most important thing that you can know about stenciling. So make sure that you are controlling the load, you're controlling the offload. Um, anybody can control the load and the offload. Um, a three-year-old can do that. So um, if you just pause for a second and be like, oh, did I offload enough? Did I load too much? Did I load enough? Like those are the, like the very, very basics. So um, you guys can do this and then that will prevent you bleeding under. And then all of the tools that we're using, if you notice this jumbo dauber, let me get a clean one, is domed. Okay, it's domed in all the directions. The dome brush that we use for stenciling is domed in all the directions. Um, all the tools that I love to use are all domed. And what happens is when you have traditional stencil brushes, um, they, when you push down on them, they kick that piece out right there. And then that forces that underneath your stencil. And that is always going to be a bleed under problem. Um, if you Google stenciling, you're going to see that bleeding under is the most, how does not bleed under my stencils is like one of the most popular searches. And that is how you prevent that. It's just easy. Just switch your materials, switch your tools. All right. So we'll go for step two. And I'm going to do the same thing. I just blobbed right in the middle, but I will guess I'll just continue on to that side and then continue down from there. Really important that you do kind of work methodically in a big hole. It just makes it much smoother for an application. And then I'm looking to see where I need one last little touch of anything. Okay. And now this is going to go into our water. We like to put the brush handle. Um, into the end and then let that sink that dauber to the bottom of the water so that it doesn't dry up. Okay, so now I have this done. I'm gonna dry and then maybe Carrie can ask us questions after I get done making a lot of noise. We wanna answer any questions while I'm doing that. question that you shared with me that was about the veins on a leaf. Maybe I could answer that while this is curing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is that cool? Yeah. 
The question was, how do you paint veins on a leaf? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did have a couple people who reached out and asked. So with some of our designs, there are already going to be veins in the design. So if it is something that you're like, man, I don't actually want to spend the time doing this myself, then you can grab one of those. Or you can do it by hand. Mm -hmm. So there are options depending on what you're most comfortable with. But um, our friend Kelly, our friend Janice, they both asked about, I would like help with the veining if it is not already in the stencil. Yeah, I think it's such a, it's such a great question. Um, just a really great question. Um, one thing that you're going to notice with your leaves is that you always have, um, always um, is an, probably an overstatement, but there always seems to be a, a bend or a, a flow to the leaf, um, and that is important when you are doing your veining. Um, and so this is the, um, the triple threat Ghost Rider. Um, we call it the Ghost Rider because um, it will erase with water, spit, um, erasers. It has an eraser on the back end um, as well. And it has a gray lead, a white ceramic lead. The gray is also ceramic. And I don't know if you've ever used graphite pencils on any painting projects, but the graphite smudges and stains and you can never get it off. Um, so this is different than that. And it also has a roller ball that doesn't have let ink in it. And so that is great for tracing. Okay, so I'm going to get my white ceramic lead. And I'm going to follow, just kind of give myself like a little bit of guidance. I'm going to follow the shape of my leaf. Okay. And then from there, um, if you think about like your body as like things come off your body. You've got legs, you've got arms, um, they come off of the core. So there's your core and you're going to have something coming off of there and it's going to usually move with a little bit of a lift. Okay. And you're going to follow that line. So you're going to start above where it starts and you're just going to flow into where those um, leaf um, arms are. So I've got leaf arms and leaf legs and that's how you're going to map it out. So whatever your leaf is telling you, um, that's what you want to do. And then you don't have to, so we can, you know, just get rid of that one. I don't like what I did. I'm going to get rid of it all. Um, you know, I, I just don't, I don't want that, you know, so you can totally just get rid of it and um, you can sketch it back. Okay. So we like that. Now we're going to get into a liner brush. Um, so we have the Mighty Fine Liner. I'm not certain these are in stock. We are getting our liners remanufactured um, because reasons. Um, I do not believe we have any on the website right I now. I don't believe we do either, yeah. Um, so this would be something that's a little too fat, and this would be something that's a little bit too little. Um, and I had sent the brushes that I wanted made um, to the manufacturer. So. Um, currently, I'd have to go dig through um, my old brushes, but I'm going to go ahead and use the Mighty Fine. So if you have a nice sharp liner, and then what you want to do is you're going to keep your handle straight. I call it handles to heaven, right? You want to be at an about like just totally upright posture with your brush. Okay, and then you want to have it so when you get your brush, you can reach out and make your line and you want to be able to kind of do this little movement, okay? And so, a little bit, and you always wanna thin your paint if you're gonna line. And I always get my ferrule dry. I don't like a wet ferrule when I'm doing stuff. And I always twist when I load. So I do a little twist action. This is a habit for me. I don't know why I do it. Not sure it's necessary. Okay, and then you're gonna start at the heaviest end because you'll always end when you lift off, it will always be a finer line than when you start. So you always wanna start at the heavy end and then you're just gonna drop that. It's really, really thin. So I'll go again and just get rid of that guy. Okay, and I'm gonna use a little bit more pressure and I'll come all the way down. Notice that I'm not perfectly lined up with the line that I made. Absolutely not a problem because we've already seen that I can get rid of those lines. So that is not a problem. And they're just there for guidance. So now you want to anchor your hand. So I ran out of 
area to put my hand down. So I'm going to anchor with something. I could anchor with a bottle of paint. I could anchor with a board. I can anchor with a bridge. I can anchor with my hand. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start on that line. And I'm going to finish and then I lift up at the end. And then we'll do the other side. Um, when you use your hand as an anchor, um, you can get a deeper plunge with your hands. So sometimes that can help you make a, a nicer line. Okay, now we'll let that dry. And then, ta-da, you have your veins. Um, slightly heavier liner than this. This is the one that we had made to do all of the lace painting that I've done in my career. Um, so I painted the earth in lace. And um, with lace, you have to have such a fine point um, to make just that really, really delicate um, details. And then with leaves, obviously leaves are bulkier, bigger, that kind of thing. So um, we need something kind of in between. And um, unfortunately, that's not a product that I have been able to find already manufactured. So we are getting them manufactured for us by uh, the company that designed our, um, our dome brush for us, the Jumbo Dome. 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 <laughs> Dum, dum, dum. Dum, dum, dum. Okay, let's paint leaves. All right, so you have another, yeah. Yes, the question that we <clears throat> get the most and we had multiple people ask is about different ways to shade and highlight. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, when I, when I paint leaves, my leaves normally end up just the way that mm -hmm. you had painted them because sometimes I don't feel comfortable painting yeah. the shading and highlighting on them. Sure. But... To be able to add a shading and highlighting can really make your leaf go from flat to looking realistic. Yeah. Well, and I like to think of the accent colors as jewelry. Um, so you have your you have your basic, you know, black pants. You got your basic gold leaf, and now you can put some jewelry on it. Put a little bit of so shazam. Before we start painting, yeah. can we talk about? Um, some of the colors you pulled mm -hmm. and why you chose them. So if you're looking for colors for fall leaves, what you might pick. Yeah. Um, so the colors that I chose, obviously, are going to be your oranges. Okay. And then this one or this one will depend on how well which one shows up. So I'll be deciding that as I go. Can you tell me this? Too much, um, 40 and, 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 nine. Okay. Sorry. Um, the nine is a 90 or a 60 or it's, yes, I always get them confused. And then number 31 is a brown. Um, I've got the blackout because that was my base coat. Um, I've got 37, which will deepen my brown. It's kind of a Sonoma um, purpley color. And then number 18 is a just a good red. It's the one I use for every Christmas project known to man. Um, it's just a nice burgundy red. And um, you could... Honestly, you could go into a red or red. Um, this is Fire Trek red. This is 60, not six or nine. <laughs> yeah. And so you could choose something that's a little bit more festive and bright. And you could, honestly, as well, you could go into something yellow. So you could have fun with vibrant colors because there's no reason not to, right? You could also choose your greens. Um, and make all kinds of funness go on with your um, with your leaves. Um, on that yellow note, let's see, do I want number 10 or do I want, okay, so see this is like very paint your front door and this is a little bit more subtle, so I'm going to choose the subtler and we're going to highlight. The question was how do you shade, but I'm going to highlight first. And what color is that? And this is number 10. Uh, no, number 33. Sorry. So I'm going to pick the number 33. I'm going to wipe it off. I'm offloading. Remember, that's the easiest thing you can do is offload your paint. And then I'm going to go right in the middle of this leaf. And I'm going to zhuzh it up from the middle. I'm going to give it an inner glow. And so I'm just scumbling, swirling, whatever you want to call it. And then before I continue on with that, I want to do maybe one more pass. I want to dry it because when, like I can feel the sticky of that, if I pick up more paint and I put it on here, 
I can dig a hole right in the middle of my leaf. So anytime I'm putting on an additional color, I want to dry it so that I don't dig a hole because wet paint is attracted to wet paint in your brush and then they, they stick together. And that is, that's a no-no. Okay, so we'll go with a second coat of that. Remember that if you are liking this content, if you like what we're talking about, to give us that thumbs up, like, share, ring the bell, all the things. Okay, so we are getting a nice highlight right in the middle of that leaf. You can draw it out because I, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually go over the edges and do some things that will cover some of this up, not cover some of it up. So it's just going to be a kind of organic process. So I just want to make sure I get enough on there so that I don't have to go backwards and try to cover it again. <clears throat> okay, and for the yellow transitioning into orange, I can just use my dirty brush and I'll neutralize it and I'll show you what that means. When you've shaken your paint, especially if it's colors you haven't had out in a while, make sure you do shake them because the good stuff settles to the bottom and then you'll end up with the thin, runny, whatever that part of paint is, and you'll end up with your heavy stuff at the bottom. So always shake, but when you do that, give it a tap on your table and your paint bottle won't spit at you. Always nice to have paint bottles with manners. Okay, to neutralize our brush, wipe out your yellow, pick up your orange, it's kind of a terracotta color, and you just neutralize it on the paper towel, like try to wipe everything you can out, and then your next load will be the good load to use. So always wiping off the excess, spend some time on that paper towel, especially when you're doing a subtle technique like this. If you're just stenciling, maybe you could have just a little bit more paint on there to cover. I'm not trying to cover anything, I'm trying to um, highlight and make accents. Okay, so now I'm gonna go right on the edge of my leaf, this is so cool because you can use your, now your leaf stencil is a mask. So now the, that's providing you boundaries for the technique that you're about to do. So we're just going to highlight the edges or shade the edges. And you can make this really imbalanced. So I can totally go like a kiss over here and maybe not so much someplace else. Um, I could make it go all the way in. And notice because I've wiped off so much of the paint that it's not taking over. Um, and I can just give it a little touch right there. All right, now where we go from here is we probably go into one darker um, orange. Hi. It's heavy, so I know there's paint in there. <laughs> I think my little tube is, there we go. I think there's a little goober in there. Okay, I'm gonna get out the red, number 18. So that was um, nine, and this one is 18. I use 18 all the time, so I don't need to shake that. And maybe I'll go with a little 37. I never use 37, so I probably, can get that a nice little shake. Um, the deeper and darker your colors get, the less and less paint you need. And I always over pour. I don't know what that is. With this, I probably can go ahead and neutralize because I'm in the same color family. If I was in like, say a green, I wouldn't want to neutralize. Okay, so now that'll be my color. And now we can decide what do we want to do here. We want to, I want some weight on the back end of the leaf and maybe on the tip. And maybe I'll just have just a touch over here. And then maybe we go into a little bit deeper, neutralize it. I don't think I need to neutralize, honestly. I'm going to use this one as it mixes with the colors. So, but I do want to pay attention to drawing.
Everything's blowing away. Okay, so we can deepen that just right here on this back end. And just get a little bit of a kind of crusty, rusty looking kind of thing going on. And then flip this over. And this is probably where I'm going to need to change my brush. We'll see how this turns out on the paper towel. I might want a brighter red. Yeah, I think that's kind of more keeping with this um, kind of color family that we've got going on here. Okay, so now we go in and say, let's give this a little kiss of red. And draw it in just a little bit more. We could go backwards to our orange. Do you see how this is just playing? It's just fun. And maybe draw in some more orange deeper so that it gives me an opportunity to maybe get some deeper browns. Dry. So a lot of people who are asking the questions about shading and highlighting, the, the things that might stop them from starting it is where to put the color, mm -hmm. what color goes where, how much. So this time of year, as the leaves start to change, unfortunately this year we've been in a super duper drought. So it is not yeah. expected that we have a really beautiful fall like we typically do in Southeast Ohio. But yeah. if you find a pretty leaf, Go grab one off a tree, take a picture of it, yeah. print Study it, it. Um, yeah. put it between a piece of um, like clear yeah. paper or something to keep it. Laminate. And then, yeah. Laminate, yes. And then you <laughs> will have it in, to look at and get yeah. inspired from so you can know where the colors actually are. And then you don't have to guess. Or get Dr. online. Google. Get yeah. online. Yeah. We, I do this all the time when I'm looking at things like that. And I'm Okay, now where does that color need to go? And I'm yeah. popping up a picture of a leaf. I'm bringing my computer to my paint station, and I am following along with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And um, I only have just done this for, um, honestly, when I was getting ready for this today, um, I went and um, looked up my own art um, because I have the list of colors already listed. Um, I have the placement. I, have, I, I figured it all out in the past. So I just went to myself as my resource, but um, I would absolutely go Google something. All right, so um, now we are basically at a place where I would say, I think I'm done. So I'm gonna, let's just take a little peeky poo. Okay, so that's our leaf. And I think it's really pretty. I'm gonna add another technique. I'm gonna, this one in the water. Always put your stencil brushes, foam brushes in the water. Um, right after you're done using them, do not wait because if you wait, then you um, end up with um, a dried up mess. And if you do end up with a dried me up mess, don't worry. We have, we a, have a video. video on Facebook right now that has a step by step of something that you can use from around your house to revive mm -hmm. your brushes. So that will be in the description. So if yeah. you are watching this video, there's a little paragraph and it says more. You can click more, it will expand, and then you can mm -hmm. see all of the links to the collection for today, for the products, for some other videos that we'll be sharing. And then mm -hmm. you can check out that video to our, on our Facebook page as well. Yeah, that was, um, it was actually a really um, neat video on brush care. Like it, it just, it was, it was, it's good. It's worthy to go take a minute, go watch it. If you use brushes, you need to know this technique. All right, so I've got a heavy handled brush I have a um, white wonder brush and it is um, also in a dome shape. So this is a bigger size one. 
it is domed this way, it's shaved or tapered this way, and then it's almost like when they thin your hair with those really funny scissors that look like teeth. Um, it has that done to the tip of it, and it is the best spatter brush you'll ever use. When you spatter, you want to be careful because you will be spattering everything in the immediate vicinity. So Carrie's got a board over here, a cardboard over here that says spatter shield. Yes, yeah, Steve hooked me up because I always sit here when Patty paints and my right foot is typically behind the trash can and my left foot is out in the wilderness. And I recently put on a pair of shoes and my left shoe was spattered and my right shoe was not. So Steve made me a spatter guard so that my <laughs> shoes can remain spatterless. Um, I was <laughs> painting samples for our retail shop and um, we were we were going at it and I had black leather gorgeous boots on and I spattered the snot out of the top of them. So thankfully you can get paint off of leather but um, still it's just a bother. Okay so I've got water, I've got my paint thinned to ink like consistency. I'm going to spatter off and now I'm going to use my um, stencil as a mask again and I want to just put a couple of spatters on there and I think maybe I'll do a couple of the red in the burgundy maybe I'll mix be a crazy woman today it's fall right and I'll just do it facing the direction of the color So that is something to know about spattering. If I spatter, let's go here. Spatters also stay wet a really long time. So if I, if I anchor my um, anchoring brush, if I anchor it high, I'll get like really wide spatters. If I anchor it low, I get really concentrated. You see how that's all just right there? If I go way high, then I have snow. Okay, so that's um, some techniques that you wanna know about. And if your paint starts drying, you want to wet it back up and then always tap off the residue. residue. If I want to spatter just in this direction, I can anchor and then just tap it in the direction I want the spatters to go. So I can totally do... I need to pull it back out. Oh. From the camera. And so then if I want to spatter in a trajectory, then what I can do is I can tap my hand and slide it along so I can so I can make it go in the direction that I want to go. So you can really do a lot of neat things with spattering. Um, I love spatters. I think they just add so much to the techniques. Okay, so if you are done with your leaf mm -hmm. that you've painted mm -hmm. and you have spattered through your stencil and you are going to pick up that stencil and move it somewhere else mm -hmm. and use that same area, you will want to wipe off the spatters yeah. because they will remain wet. And then if you take your brush and you happen to dip into one of the spatters, you might get a color in your leaf that you don't want. Yeah, and um, it's really easy to, like all of these wet spatters on plastic especially, are going to stay wet a long time. So you want to just wipe that clean, wipe the backside, move on, dry this with a blow dryer, that kind of thing. So let's lift this. And then when I lift, I don't want to lift it by scooching it. I want to lift straight up and do that. So then that is how we get um, a detailed, shaded, highlighted leaf. And I think it's a really pretty leaf. I think so too. It's very pretty. So that is our lesson today. Make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell. Um, give us a thumbs up. Any of those things are fantastic. Really helps us out. Um, we're a small company, so um, we need all the help we can get. <laughs> and go see us at studior12.com. See, see you then.